30 Crazy Karma is a Bitch Stories According to Reddit Number 30 I was working at a mental health facility for the elderly as a nurse. I worked there for over a year with a perfect work record. I worked for the same company at another elderly facility also for the same amount of time with a perfect work record. My coworker, okay, no, actually I worked for the same company at another elderly facility also for the same amount of time with a perfect work record and my coworker found out that I have PTSD and decided to tell my boss at the psych facility that I have PTSD and the two together plotted to have me committed. One day in October, they launched their attack. I was working at 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. on a shift and doing very well for two hours before my boss calls me into her office to congratulate me on one year of service. When we were in there, um, she starts grilling me about my mental health and how it plays out at home. Next thing I know, she's forcing me to call my coworker who is off duty and making me go with her to the psych emergency because I have PTSD. The entire meeting was designed to stress me out. <sighs> and cause me to trigger every or trigger enough to behave poorly or crazy somehow to rationalize the next step, which was to cart me off to emergency. And when they see me, they will instantly know I belong locked away in a padded room. They didn't though. The hospital said that I was fine, just stressed and about being forced to go to the hospital like a crazy person for no reason other than admitting that I had PTSD. After the hospital let me go, my boss put me on extended medical leave without telling me and ignored all my calls for two weeks. I wrote letters lying about me to her bosses and the HR department. I filed a union grievance and a complaint with a third party whistleblower company for my company's head office to hear about. My boss lied about me to everyone. She said I told her that I had a murderer in my head. What? That I was standing in front of mirrors with knives wanting to cut flesh? They believed her so they shut down my complaints. I took it to the Human Rights Tribunal, self-represented myself against the largest long-term care provider in North America, and I fucking won. It took three long years for the incidents to end of court, it was the hardest thing that I have ever done. My employer's health declined considerably by the time trial happened. She had lost her job. She had to move to the mainland. And there is a forever public record about what she did. The coworker who helped my boss is in permanent rec is in the permanent record. And the employees of the job were ordered to learn of what she and our boss had to done to me and the outcome. She will never be comfortable at that job site again. And who slash what she is, is known to all. I got the highest amount awarded for damages to dignity and myself. I created a precedent for other PTSD persons with clean work history who do a good job and, and clock in, but have a very real struggle with PTSD symptoms. Oh boy. No karma could possibly taste better than 40,000 and a clear reputation. This is a crazy, sad story. Can you imagine just because somebody has PTSD, the boss lying and talk about how she's standing in front of mirrors with a knife and has a murderer in her brain? What? It's just unreal. <laughs> Some people are so sad and have so little going on in their life that the only way that they live is through talking about other people. Don't let that get you down some people just got to talk about you a friendly hello to everybody in the stream chat hello carny cat hello mitch runs michael davis jesus like says hope you guys are staying sexy you as well linda as we continue up this list we arrive at number 29 wow on my drive back from school, I witnessed a car run a red light in front of a police car. The car was subsequently pulled over by the cop, and I pointed laughing and then immediately smashed into the car in front of me. Ooh. Now that's what I call instant karma balls. Number 28. I count this as karma, but I call it justice, too. The bitch deserved it. 
This happened a few years ago and I had originally posted it under another account that has since been deleted. I used to live a street or two behind a central suburban bus stop on top of a big hill and I would take the bus every day to the university about an hour's bus ride away. One morning I get on the bus and the bus pulls up to the intersection waiting for the intersection lights to turn red so it's green then and pulls out. We get the green and start pulling out. All of a sudden this primped, this primped up snooty middle-aged woman in a red suit, I still remember the details because it made me so mad, flew through the red light in her huge silver Cadillac going the same way that the bus was turning. The bus driver had to slam on the brakes quite suddenly and then honked at the woman, the woman who clearly intentionally ran the red because he... Hmm. It says because he head was never down. Hmm. Her head. Okay. Got it. Sorry. That fucked my brain right up. So sorry. The woman who clearly intentionally ran the red light because her head was never down flips the bus driver off and keeps speeding. The bus driver, this really jovial large black lady, cursed and carried on. From the bus terminal to the city, you drive down a really big hill before it flattens out into the valley. In the mornings and the evenings, cops like to patrol the intersection right at the bottom of the hill especially because they can radar gun cars coming down the hill as the bus was because coming down the same hill as the bus was. It doesn't say the same, but I'm assuming that was what was meant. So the cops can radar gun cars coming down the same hill as the bus was because there is a curve in the road and if you're going too fast, the cops can catch you before you have a chance to see them and slow down. Well, guess what happened now, boy? We get to the bottom of the hill and see that the cops had pulled over a silver Cadillac into the cross street and were issuing her a ticket. The bus driver saw it and said, oh yeah, baby, and pulled the bus over to the sidewalk near to where the intersection was and flagged down the cops. He came on and asked what was up and the bus driver asked if she had been caught speeding. The cops said that she had and the bus driver said, oh yeah, is it still illegal to run a red light? The cop laughed and said that it is, and then asked if the lady in the Cadillac had done had done that and the bus driver said yes the cop asks well we will add that to her ticket would you be willing to come in and witness for court for that the bus driver said honey i get paid to go to court for stuff like this it'd be my pleasure and the whole bus started clapping it was such a good day it's such a good day like that carny cat's like hey kyle heart i don't know who carny cat is but hello to you Here's hoping you're having a wonderful evening. Wow. As we continue up this list, we're only at number 27. It's okay, some of these are short. Driving to Chicago, a crazy guy is on the road raging, swerving erratically while yelling about shooting us. He zooms off five or so miles later. We see his van upside down in a ditch. He's standing on the shoulder talking to a cop. Mm-mm. Well, some people get exactly what's coming to them. Mm. Don't be like this, man. Is it worth not getting there alive? Sorry. Number 26. My brother was making fun of an old man. Slowly. It seems like I skipped a lot. No, we started at 30. Okay, I got it. My brother was making fun of an old man slowly shuffling across a parking lot. Look at Speedy Gonzalez now or something like that, and two seconds after, he, my brother, bashes his foot on the cement parking barrier. He limped back to the car as I laughed hysterically. Somebody said, Gimpy Gonzalez. Come on now. <laughs> Such a racist character, I fucking love it. I fucking love it. Okay. Ping pong, number 25. Some of my favorite gifts of all time are the karma is a bitch type. This is now, this is now a fucking, what's the name of that crap? The, it's ASMR. 
Hold up, let me get. I'm going to get a straw and blow through it, guys. Check it out. Smack myself in the face. Ow. I'm gonna do it again. Uh. Smack myself on the other side of the face. Uh. Now I'm gonna take this bottle of antacid and gently turn it over. <laughs> now I'm gonna I'm gonna take I'm gonna unscrew the, the bottle of antacids. Now I'm going to put it back on. <laughs> Alright, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Okay. Woo! Here are five Karma is a Bitch gifts. Are we really watching gifts on this list? What is happening? Um, Here it is. He's going to kick that sign, isn't he? Yep. And then he gets caught in the sign. Sign wins. Fatality. You stupid bitch. Oh boy. Oh, it's kind of sad. <laughs> when you sit on a car that's not even yours. <laughs> Funny. Funny. I like the idea of the guy being in the car. Wow. Wow you dumb bitch okay so water balloon sneak attack I hope that bitch had her phone on her stupid hell anyway messing up somebody's cool trick you bitch god he must have felt like a superhero I've seen this before but he basically slides the tray and the guy steps on it and he falls over some of the dopest shit I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> um, cyclist pulls out in front of a car and flips off driver. Whoa! Whoa, bro! What a loser. He pulled out in front of a car? What a douche. There's more content like this on a subreddit called Nice Try, but no. Okay. Thank you for being here, guys. You know I love it. I'm talking to the people who are watching me live on Twitch, as they do every night at 9.30. Happy Easter to you guys. Happy April Fools. I don't need to hit you with any of that because I'm not a basic fuckboy monkey baby. I'm sure it's all good fun for you guys or something. And there's nothing harmful about like a quick little April Fools joke, but I mean why? I don't like to I don't like to breathe life into deception. What I will show you though is um what I will show you is the runner up to today's um, stream thumbnail. The thumbnail I went with was like a boy who was all like, yeah, girl, you better stay right there. And then the girl like, boy, come on now. You better come on with your bitch ass now. And from that day on, Butter Slice was not about ladies anymore. Cause you know, you know, he's all like, mm, you want this? I love it, I love it. But here's the runner up. Um, is this girl trying to knock over this dude nachos <laughs> he just hit that bitch one time like with your bitch ass oh so graceful <laughs> i love this she's like uh, 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 and then she pulls the chair and the chair's about to fall on her too oh it's just beautiful and the way he just step over that hoe you know what i'm talking about because it you're in your mind you're thinking look he got a drink he could dump that drink on this dumb hoe but he doesn't the drink ain't worth it you ain't worth this drink. Amazing. Outstanding. I should say outstanding like uh, Mortal Kombat. Superb. Outstanding. Is that how they say it? Let me get a, 
outstanding Mortal Kombat. That's how I think it is, like outstanding, something like that. Hold on, outstanding. No, that's like really old. I need one of the newer ones. Uh, outstanding. I don't know, man. This seems like really old. I want like a newer one. Oh no, they see in my my videos. My videos of Sam Hyde and Eric Andre. It's okay, cause nobody knows who these people are. So I may not be the best looking guy in the world. Though. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine that's somebody's first taste of who Sam Hyde is. Anyway, ooh, whoops. Anyway, let's get back to the list, guys. I'm not. I don't. What? Oh my God. Number twenty-four. <clears throat> Maybe when my ex-husband who stole four thousand dollars from me to go visit his mistress in another country called me to beg for money because his lights got cut off oh my god someone says i can see you sitting there grinning ear to ear with a glass of wine just flipping the lights on and off the lights on and off is a nice touch. <laughs> kind of creepy. Oh, man. Prelude wants the whoopsie. That's one of my favorite twos. Mortal Kombat. Whoopsies. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking love that noise. Hold on here. Just give me the, um. It's toasty. Why? I don't think it's. It can't be toasty. That's so weird. That's the guy, too. That's Oski. I should put that in a video. Wow. Listen, as we continue up this list of not birds ripping other birds' heads off, God, I gotta. I gotta close my freaking tabs before I start these lists. Of 30 Crazy Karma is a bitch stories. We arrive at number what? A bit of that number 23. Um, what's your favorite uh, sock puppet? Yeah, engaging the people in the stream. You know, I'm way late for this, but this is one of my favorite stories to tell. So when I see a thread about karma, I can hardly resist sharing this one. I went to a small school of about 80 students. In my class, there was 12. Although our numbers were small, we still had the classic bully archetype. Let's call him Christopher. Christopher was one of those kids who felt he could do whatever he wanted to anyone else, and he would be absolved of all the blame if he finished his routine with a, it's just a joke, because he was a grade A prick. Well, people getting away with that these days saying it was just a prank, brah, you know? Enter the second major character. There was also a mentally challenged kid in our class. Let's call him Todd. Man, Todd got that retard strength. Now, Todd was fond of asking questions. It was just his own way of obtaining information. I know this must sound bad, but we got annoyed with him pretty quickly. He, hey, we were just kids. Now, although Todd, well, damn faith, I love you and the hearts. I appreciate that. And you, mm, girl. Ooh, baby, I love your way. I want to tell you I love your way. Now, although Todd annoyed us, we still all looked after him and made sure nobody gave him shit. He was one of us. Sometimes that was a good thing. Sometimes it was a bad thing. The karmic incident in place took place one place when the place was placed two out of place. Once when we were the oldest year in school. We basically ruled the school. Okay. Naturally, this power would go to our heads, and it corrupted nobody quite as much as Christopher. Oh my god, you're killing me. Why did Stripe say good prank, Faith? Why did she prank me? Are you implying that the hearts were supposed to be indicative of love, but no one could love me? And that's what you're saying? <sighs> 
way, we were playing rounders. It's kind of like UK baseball. Oh my God, get me out of this foreigner long-winded list. How do people learn to make points without writing me a damn book? We were practicing for an upcoming competition. We split up into two teams and made play each other. And made play each other. What? I was kind of mad because Todd was on my team. And as you can imagine, he wasn't the most athletically gifted. Yeah. You like that shitty inflection delivery? Picture Kermit the Frog trying to run the 110 mile hurdles. That unathletic. I don't know what we're afraid of. We were losing due in no small part to the other team's superior members. I had lost interest and only gave lackluster hits when it was my turn. Then it was Todd's turn. I watched just to see how it would go and I looked at the other team. Christopher was pitching the ball. He wasn't even giving Todd a chance. He'd throw the balls at his feet and burst out laughing with his team. Babe Ruth couldn't have done a damn thing with those kind of throws. It went on for three minutes. Eventually, his own team got sick of him and told him to give a decent throw so Todd could strike out and the game could progress. He throws it. Todd braces himself. We're all watching now. Todd has tears in his eyes. The kind of thing humiliation does to someone like that. And as the ball draws closer, the world moved in slow motion for me. Whack. Todd didn't just hit the ball with the bat. He fucking annihilated it. The bang was heard all over the school. It sounded like a bomb had gone off. Localized entirely around the side of the bat. So what does a ball do when it's met with a force like that? I don't know for sure. But in this case, it went back to Christopher at mock speed. I didn't even see the ball on its way back. It was like a bullet from a pistol. When it got to Christopher, it hit him squarely in the eye. He fell down, out, cold. One of his friends helped him inside while the rest of us, both teams, cheered and laughed. We lifted Todd on our shoulders and gave him a hero's support. He was no longer just Todd. He was Todd, the destroyer of ass hairs. Todd. A heartwarming story. Someone says, and that's how Todd got his porn name. Todd the Destroyer of Assholes. Okay. Mm hmm. Let me just get a little bit of this drink. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. You know, that's what I'm talking about. Woo! You guys are good, right? Let's keep it going. As we roll up this list to number 22, seeing that asshole who continues to swerve in and out of traffic, speed like no other, and cut you off over multiple times, get pulled over. Ooh, yeah. Someone said it reminds me of this. This is a one minute video. Mm, mm. It got, mm, and he's all over the place, and then you get up there. Ooh. The cop went out into the middle of the street. That's dope. <laughs> the music was the best part. Shit. Anyway, um, here we go. Number 21. My old manager was a monster. He belittled people, made hostile and made a hostile environment, denied anything that would make coworkers happy while giving himself every comfort. He even denied me a half day to go to my mother's funeral, adding, would it be a big deal if you couldn't go? Shoot this nigga. I'm just d joking, YouTube, right? He finally stepped on his dick after he wrote up a fictitious counseling statement about someone and the entire office revolted. The manager wasn't fired like we wanted, but he was relieved. So in comes the new manager, very well regarded 20 year Air Force veteran, retired at E9. Humble guy who knew how to handle people. We have our first awkward team meeting, the old manager bitterly in attendance. As the new manager is giving his nice to meet you speech, he sees the douchebag glaring around the table trying to intimidate people. He stops talking, pauses for a few seconds, and then says, you know, when I was in the Air Force, I learned that if you take care of your people, they'll take care of you. 
He then stared, stared directly at the old manager and said, and if you don't take care of people, they'll take care of you. My man, my man, that's how, you know what I'm talking about? I didn't even need to reread it to know the way he fucking meant it. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, you know what I'm talking about? If you take care of your people, they'll, they'll take care of you, right? But if you don't take care of your people, they'll take care of you. You know what I'm talking about? I'll take care of y'all. You know what I mean? I could take care of you now. Or I could take care of you. What you do? What you do you want? Do you want? Do you want me to? <laughs> yeah, I ain't playing. I'm not playing. I wonder who all is here. I wonder who's in attendance tonight that I would be shocked and aroused by. I wonder. As we continue up to number 20, boy oh boy, I worked as a bartender at a bowling alley and for one reason or another, one of the bartenders hated me. She was constantly poaching people on my side. <sighs> Excuse me. We split tips and whenever it was her turn to count them down, I know she wasn't splitting them properly. Tried to get the scheduling manager to put her on my days. Um. I'm guessing he means that he tried to get the scheduling manager to not put her on his days, right? That's what makes sense here. Jesus Christ. One of my regulars even said that he caught her pocketing tips and not putting them in our communal bucket while I was working with her. Well, tournament season began with uh, which everyone dreaded slash look forward to dreaded because the shifts were twice or three times as long as normal and there was a constant rush of people at the bar, but look forward to because shifts were two or three times as long as normal and there was a constant rush of people at the bar, so we'd make as much money in days as we did in weeks. Well, the first tournament was teams that she considered hers. They bowled on her side on days she worked, so she knew them well and was looking forward to their tournament tips. She came in, saw that I was scheduled to the bar to 10 that day and flipped out. She started ranting to the manager who happened to be scheduling uh, the scheduling manager and the owner of the place happened to be standing there. The owner pretty much said I was one of the better bartenders. So I was getting put on the tournaments and if she didn't like it, she could just leave. My coworker left and then I got to work her normal shifts as well. Wow. You know, that's pretty dope. It's pretty dope that it got to go down like that. Well, good for her. All hail Montezuma. Mm. Mm. Faith says, please take care of me. I can't do it myself. Oh, Faith. Everybody needs a little help sometimes. Mm, 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 mm. Sorry, you shouldn't be banging a straw. On the mic stand, Carney Cat says, "Take good care of me." <laughs> Who the hell is Carney Cat, guys? Figure it out. Nice to see original Annoyer here, my man. And we living, spelled with a one. It's spelled we living, L I V one N G. Interesting, to say the least. Here we are at number nineteen. A woman on a cell phone runs me off the road. She flips me off for laying on the horn and the road dead ends a mile up the road. She was going right and I was going a, a ways back going left. A van was in front of her at the red light and she just plows into the back of it. I slowed down as I passed with the window down, said running me off the road wasn't enough to get your attention, huh? She flips out, I laugh, and drive off into the sunset. Now, ladies and gentlemen of the stream, ladies and gentlemen of the Kyle stream, I'm really, I'm really curious as to your answer to this question. If someone had been acting stupid, let's just say they were cutting you off, 
or, you know, being one of those aggressive motherfuckers that's really just trying to get there before everybody and weaving in and out of traffic and maybe even going to the part where they're rushing you off the road. Would you, if they crashed, slow down and just give them a look like, ha ha, maybe, maybe a couple of words and then drive off? Or would you kind of take the Kyle approach and maybe pull out your camera phone and be all like, so you ran me off the road, huh? So you ran me off the road, huh? Mom says they got business class. That's good. That's sexy. So that'll be a funner trip when they uh, when they get on those planes. And even better. Why? <laughs> this was just like not even like the long one though. I should plug this phone in. I should plug this phone in. Hmm. Oh shit. I'm supposed to like. You know, I'm supposed to do it on Twitch. I mean, on Snapchat, too. To be like, I'm streaming. I can't keep up every day. <laughs> Guys, what's the what's the most annoying thing that happened in your day today? You know, tell me. I want to know. I want to know what was super annoying. <coughs> If anything, of course. So listen, we get to number 18, and it reads, I was working in a pub in Liverpool and had just arrived about 10 a.m. to start my shift. I knocked on the door and waited for someone to let me in. I became aware of some shouting and turned around to see two guys, shirts off, swaggering towards me, talking in a language I did not understand. They came right up to me, and with what little English they did speak, they called me a fucking whore. And a fucking bitch. Nasty stuff. And I was really quite scared. I was knocking on the door really hard at this point. But after insulting me and laughing, they walked off towards a busy road. I watched as they walked out into the traffic, waving their arms at the cars to stop for them. And then giving the drivers the finger. Suddenly, one of the car stops and four big guys got out. One of the nasty dudes ran off, but the big man caught and shoved hard against the cars a couple of times, clearly hurting his head and elbow. Then one of the car guys made out that he was going to punch him, big time, drawing his fist far back. The little shit just covered his face and screamed, and they didn't get hit, but the car guys and a lot of passers-by burst out laughing. They let him go. And he ran away. It felt good. It felt good. Ooh. So calm. Intriguing. Ladies and gentlemen, as we plow through the remaining entries of this list of 30 crazy karmas of bitch stories. We're at number 17. That's a ripe age. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm sorry. Ah, you can't make jokes like that, man. What does that mean? A ripe age to learn how to play softball. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, wowee. The neighbors on the balcony next door, having smashed a time throwing bottles. No, Jesus. Having a smashing time. Oh, my God, Nigel Thornberry. Throwing bottles onto the sidewalk. They can't get any sleep. And I have to wake up at 7.30 a.m. No, you can't get any sleep. Well, why do you write it like that? I can't stand you now. Anyway, make the decision to get my rest and request officers to survey the scene. Watching from my window, I see three fratties picking up glass under the flashlight of two deputies. With the issue resolved, I guess you could say... I called the karma police. No, I don't like this entry. I don't like the way he ended it either. Hmm. Hmm. Prelude says someone that he shares Netflix with told him to stop watching because only two devices can watch at once now. Well, who pays for it? What do you mean you share it? Who pays for it? You share it. 
y'all both y'all both get paying like 350 a month how much is netflix a month dude what the fuck look we'll both chip in to the netflix bill what you pay half what world are you living in how much is netflix monthly we're what the fuck Stop it. Okay, well, no, you're not going to tell me the price, are you? You're not going to tell me the price. How much does Netflix cost in 2017? Oh, it's $10 a month. And then they were moving it up to $10.99. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. Hmm. <sighs> Who the fuck is John Crickfaluzzi? Is this a real motherfucker? Is John Crickfaluzzi a real word? Who the fuck? He's a Canadian animator. Of course you fucking know about an animator, Stripes. Ren and Stimpy cartoon creator John Crickfaluzzi accused of assault harassment. Well, who isn't these days? I just hope he didn't go as far as Dan Schneider. In which case, we'll be okay. Wow. God, man. People gotta stop being inappropriate. Isn't this guy like a billion years old now, though? When was this? Ooh. Look, look, stop getting me into your animation news, Kyle. Okay. Ugh. When I was driving my Jeep very carefully in a snowstorm, someone in a Mustang passed me in an unsafe manner. He almost lost control of his car, which would have caused an accident that included me. Picture someone dangerously fishtailing right in front of you with an 18-wheeler coming at you in the other lane. I saw him in the ditch about five minutes later. Idiot. <coughs> You're right, Stripes. You know, I call everybody Kyle because there's a little bit of Kyle in everybody, but not you, Stripes. But not you. Mm. I said it. Wow, 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 wow. I can't wait for Dia to roll into the stream and just be like, Hello, everybody. I hope you're amazing because you deserve it. And you you should have a great flowery day. That's just the best because that's that's what it's all about. And make other people feel so great. Uh, I'm Dia. What? Fucking Linda. <laughs> Thank you, Linda. Thank you, Faith. Faith doesn't like to watch me play games anymore, but there's a character in Far Cry 5 named Faith which is amusing. Let's knock out the remaining 15 on this list so I can eat. Mm. And by eat, I probably just mean chill shit. Oh, 30 crazy karma is a bitch stories. Number 15, my dad kicked our dog because it was standing in front of him. It was standing in front of the fridge and he wanted a beer. But as soon as he opened the fridge, the shelf that was holding the beer fell off and every single beer can busted. Your dad's a dick. What are you kicking dogs for? You don't get a dog to kick to, bitch. Oh. Number 14. Looks like a, a gif. And the guy says I chuckle every time. But what if... What if the gif is... Not working anymore. And with a name as, as, as clear as a funny gif instant karma. Who knows what it could have been. Ugh, let's just type it in the Google and see what the hell comes up. Funny gif, instant karma. Ooh, this guy probably tries to push somebody in the pool, but then they move and he falls in the pool. Oh, even worse. He fell in after pushing the other guy. Oh no, everybody at the pool, clearly intending to get into the pool, having been pushed into the pool. Oh no, my day is ruined. Number 13. When I was a kid, we visited Montreal. Mm -hmm. I had gotten a hockey puck as a souvenir. Okay. While we were in our hotel, my sister decided to mess with me by hiding it. I got mad and yelled in my high-pitched voice, Give me back my hockey puck! Before smacking her in the head with a pillow. Guess where she had hidden it? Ooh, delightfully devilish, Seymour. Sorry. Number 12, 
I'm from San Diego, and during the summer, you have to claim bonfire pits on the beach really early in the morning. How did your brain know to put that there? You're so good at this, Kyle. Now ruin your own momentum by, by congratulating yourself. That's a magic man in my head. If you want it for that night. So, my friends and I go to the beach at 8 a.m. and stayed there so that we could get a bonfire going into the night. Just before sundown, this one couple asked if they could share the bonfire with us, and since our group wasn't too big, we decided to share it with them. However, that couple proceeded to bring a group of like 15 others, and they literally surrounded the pit and pushed us out. We were pissed, but were so tired from being at the beach all day, we decided to head out. Little did we know, that night had an extreme high tide warning, and when we moved all of our stuff over the wall that divided the beach, walk with the beach, a huge wave came over it and washed out the whole group surrounded by our bonfire. The wave flipped over their table of food, took a handful of sandals back into the ocean, and destroyed all their stuff. The best part was this one girl was trying to jump the wall to save herself, but she didn't jump high enough and ended up falling right back into the water. Karma is a bitch. Mm. Chaotic unending cosmos says I had to turn down my volume so my little cousin doesn't hear you swearing. But I'm such a I'm such a great guy, you know, I don't swear. Jeez. I'm such a high flying. Such a, a, a yeah. I'm so straight edge. Okay, <laughs> I'm sorry. Number 11. When I was in first grade, my class had recess and this bully pushed me to the ground. I fell and was about to go off on the kid when this fourth grader came over and lifted the kid up and took the kid over to the principal. Karma is the, is the, the bee's knees. Is that okay for you? You chaotic, unending asshole. Ho, <laughs> Oh, 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 oh. Sorry, gotta stop being an idiot. Number 10, I was running laps on a grass field in military when I was about to lap a guy who'd always lap the shit out of me. For those who aren't familiar with those types of terms, lapping somebody in a race is basically going around a complete time ahead of them. So say we're all running five laps, and by the time that one person completes one lap, you're actually on your second lap that is lapping that person. I mean, you should understand that. There aren't like three-year-olds. What does lap mean? Anyway, <clears throat> as I passed him, I yelled, gotcha, bitch, and immediately stepped in a hole in the ground and twisted my ankle. Despite the pain of jacking my ankle up, I thought the karmic payout was hilariously timed. Hmm. Mitch Run says some good games in PS Plus now. They, they didn't change it. It's already the first. Yeah, it's only the first. They wouldn't have changed the PS Plus now. And what you mean now, Mitch Runs, with your corny ass? PS Plus has always had pretty dope games. Um, All the way back to... Uh, uh, the one with the... I think it's called Infamous, where the guy has like powers or something. Number nine, last Saturday I was on a crowded New York City subway at 2 a.m. Two drunk dudes, young 20s, uh, lighting a joint and walking around flaunting it. One literally came up to me and said, you think a pothead ain't gonna smoke a joint? What? <laughs> okay. The whole train kept ignoring them and they kept parading around being a bunch of morons. They spotted two taller athletic looking dudes and started making fun of them for looking like cops. It was the line, which one of you is the sergeant, that finally put the athletic guys over the edge. They look at each other, smiled, reaching into their pocket and pulled out their badges. Okay, boys, empty your pockets. The subway blew up in laughter. They, ha they would have gotten away with everything if they just didn't go bother the two plain clothes police officers. Score one for the good guys. What a bunch of dumbasses. Oh my god. Prelude says, Kyle, look at what Faith said. 
Faith says, bless you, question mark? What the fuck does that mean, you stupid pieces of crap? I'm being hilarious, okay? I understand that she was asking about 36 packets of gushers. <laughs> Only Faith, man. Hey, guys, how much gushers should I get? If only I could get the right person to host me on Twitch, then I could turn many women into gushers. If you know what I'm talking about. Bazinga. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, here we go. Number eight. Oh boy. Happened to me at work. A meth head was trying to play with like a thousand coins for a five dollar scratch off. She tried to say yes, and she was only 10 cents short, ended up being over a dollar short, then complained and said that any decent person would have spotted her the money. Pretty much told her that she could go down the street and try there if she'd like. She pulled out a 20 and bought two. As she walked out of the store, she said, karma is a bitch. When she gets to her car, a cop pulls up behind her, blocking her in. They proceeded to search the car and then arrest her and her boyfriend. It was hilarious. Fuck her. <laughs> I like this one. I like this story. <laughs> Fuck her. Whoa. I like this story. Mitron says, hosting is when a Twitch member puts another streamer on their channel for all of their viewers to see. Yep, that's right. So I guess I'd have to appeal to the type of person that has a shitload of viewers, but this content isn't really, you know appealing to people who typically stream games on Twitch, it'd be, it'd be confusing to say the least. Maybe I should have tried to be doing this for about a year here. I can't even um, get the affiliate thing to work, but to be honest, it's the weekend, so it's not a, it's not a business day, and also it's Easter, so who knows if, if all these people are playing with bunnies or doing whatever they do. It's pretty ridiculous, isn't it? Isn't it? All I know is I hope you guys are happy, and I hope you guys had a great day, and that you're loving yourself and each other. Number seven. I was kicking a customer out for being racist and cursing at one of my employees. He yelled offensive shit all He yelled offensive stuff all. You guys are lucky you don't have a face cam for Kyle because you should see some of the face the face breaking reactions I have when I'm just like what do you what do you look he yelled offensive stuff and then tried to slam the door on his way out but it had one of those things on it that makes the door close slowly he pushed it hard <clears throat> he pushed it hard it didn't budge and he slipped and fell on the door we had a good laugh okay mr hododen says so kyle would Twitch subs get into the same spot as sponsors from YouTube? Yes, they would. Indeed. Or maybe I just create another image. How ridiculous would that be? Another image for sponsors. Subs. <laughs> What's happening? Uh, I can't. I love, I love those of you who are uh, going that crazy because you guys are, are really what's keeping this... Um, continuously happening so i love and appreciate you number six i got rear-ended in a turn lane by a girl that was texting she was doing 45 miles per hour and i was stopped no major injuries i went to her court date hoping that she got a big fine or something she got a 50 dollar ticket i was a i was a little bit upset as i was sitting at the stoplight to pull out of the court I watched her read a, a run a red light and T-bone a cop. I don't normally laugh at other people's misfortune. However, I laughed my ass off at that one. Someone says she had to pay for your repairs, I hope. And somebody else says that's what insurance is for. Assuming both port porties. Come on, Kyle. I had insurance. <laughs> oh, man. We live in a really gay world 
where cops can put people away for literally like a, 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 a the fingernails worth of drugs for the rest of their life. But somebody driving a vehicle that rams into another human being can get away with a little bit of fucking a little bit of cash as a, a, a slap on the wrist. And sometimes people that get drunk and then get behind the wheel of a vehicle is just like, hey, go take this class. Holy shit. This is scary. And we got to live in a world where where the Nintendo refuses to make a core Pokemon game, giving it out to Niantic, sorry, scrub ass, so they can take a crap over something that could have been the biggest thing in the world. Don't think I still ain't mad about Pokemon Go, baby. Y'all just ruined it. Ugh, just ruined it. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Can you imagine putting something out as a joke? You know, that's the way I like to think that they did the Pokemon game. They put it out as a joke. But the next day you wake up and you have a trillion dollars right there from people going, oh, my God, we love this thing that you made. Now, you got two options. You could just go, nigga, I'm rich. See y'all later. You know what I'm talking about? Or or you can go, OK, if this made this much money overnight, we can probably make more if we just keep giving them what they want. So. If you don't know how or what to do or what they want with a trillion dollars, maybe you can afford to hire some people to figure that shit out. Hire some people to do that legwork, make what people want or figure it out by just hanging out on the Internet for a little bit of, you know what I mean? Impersonating other people. Hello, fellow kids. You know, Jesus, I'm not going to get into it. I'm not going to get into it. But we're going to finish the list of 30 crazy karma as a bitch stories because Niantic, Niantic going to get theirs. Just you wait. Wow. Here we are at the remaining five. And I say five, but I mean four because four has been deleted. I'll read another one. Maybe. Number five. I'm sitting on the subway late at night because a bad car accident occurred. The highway was packed and barely moving. And one guy thinks he's smarter than everyone else and tries to drive on the shoulder. He makes a good little ways before running into a ramp and also packed. It's also packed, packed with cars. He had nowhere to go and no one let him in. He was stuck between cars in the most in the rightmost lane and cars from on the ramp. Everyone stuck bumper to bumper and flowed around him. I went from watching him pass me and almost getting out of my view to passing him and losing sight of him in my rearview window. Well, adorable. <laughs> Number three, I was at a party one time and this one girl couldn't stop talking shit about this other girl that was coming to the party. The other girl shows up and this dude picked her up and hugged her and spun her around in a way where her foot kicked the girl that was talking shit right in the head. <laughs> While she was sitting on the couch, her beer spilled all over her, and she caught a black eye. Someone said contagious black eyes are the worst. Caught a black eye. Stop it. Y'all are so bad. Jeez. Number two. When I was a kid, I threw a basketball into a puddle in front of a friend of mine splashing him. I'm walking backwards, pointing and laughing, and I turn around into a pothole and knock myself out. This is a pole. Where'd you get all of that other, that, those other letters? <laughs> okay, well, I guess I made something unfunny funny. To me, anyway. Number one on this list reads, The other day I was talking or taking my dog for a walk around the neighborhood. She squatted down to take a shit and I reached for my doggy bags only to realize that I was fresh out. So I peeked around making sure nobody was looking and I just left it. 10 minutes later, I'm walking across the road and I'm cutting through a thin grass median in the center. And what do you know? I step in dog shit. I wasn't even mad. I knew I deserved it. Carry doggy bags, you scumbag humans. Fucking letting your dog shit all over the place now that I shit it all <laughs> oh boy I always have like these other lists that I pull up that I'm not sure if I've ever done it before so what if I'm real willing to read 10 
from this. Let's see. I mean, this one, you could go more. You could probably get away with way more than 10, but... Kim, man, it's like a bonus. So I'll do 11. That's one more. <clears throat> Here we go. Number 11. And this list is asking retail service workers, um, retail or service workers of Reddit, what's the biggest instant karma you've seen? So, number 11. I'm currently at a co-signment shop. We have two stories of furniture, and it's only things people bring in for us to sell for some profit. A lady came in with her son. He was like five or six years old, and she looks around. He was, he had, oh, we had two bar stools, and she came up to the desk and said, I'd like to order two more of these bar stools. I smiled and said, we can't do that. Those belong to someone, and that's all that they had to consign with us. She looks back and says, well, why the fuck do you order ones like this? I'm sure you can find them online. I clench my teeth and smile again and say, ma'am, we really can't do that. If you'd like to go online, you are more than welcome to look for yourself, but I can't help you. And I'm sorry. She huffed and started walking to the door, talking about getting me fired, making a horrible review of this place. She then got a nice big face full of door. It's a push door and it was locked. And she looks at me and screams, why the fuck is this locked? I have no idea. Then her son looks at her and says, mommy, you were mean to the lady. And I don't want to go till you say sorry. Best kid ever. Ooh, baby, I love you, kid. You know, that kid got his ass whooped later. Poor baby. <clears throat> How is everybody? Everybody good? Damn. Michael Davis said, imagine pulling up like 18 images of sponsors from different platforms. I'd like to thank my recent PayPal subscribers here. And, and don't forget those people that, that are donating via Patreon. Right over here, I want to thank my sponsor, uh, Rolex Watches. Yeah, remember when people wore watches? It's ironic now. They make TVs. Rolex Watches make TVs. That'd be pretty dope. Here we are, number 10. Wow. I'm not sure if being a public defender counts as a retail or service worker, but considering what I provide chem criminals defense, <sighs> considering that I provide criminal defense to indigent clients facing deprivation of their rights and freedom, I'll consider it a service nonetheless. Sorry, I was like sitting back in my chair. I was representing a scumbag client who was a massive meth head who got high and beat the hell out of her 80 year old daughter. That's not what that says. Who was high and beat the hell out of her eight year old daughter with a belt after she accidentally broke mommy's meth pipe. Oh, damn. Well. She was charged with child cruelty and possession of meth, and given her criminal record, the DA's plea offer was three years of prison. Needless to say, my client didn't want to go to prison for giving that cunt what she deserved, and started freaking out at me when I told her that that's the best offer I was going to get from the DA, and that it was either accept the offer or go to trial. I further pointed out the mountain of evidence against her, primarily the photographs of her daughter's injuries, the bloody belt that was recovered from the bedroom, the broken meth pipe with meth residue in it, and the fact that her daughter was going to testify against her at trial after she was done cursing me out, calling me a public pretender. Mmm. You've heard of a defender, okay? And every other derogatory name that she could think of, she fired me and somehow managed to hire a private attorney for the low price of $8,000. I still don't know how she managed to come up with that, probably sucking some dicks, but I have plenty of reliable guesses. Ooh, you throwing that shade, baby. The private attorney guaranteed her 
that she would win her case at trial, and that's exactly what she chose to do. Long story short, the private attorney clearly never even read this woman's file before the trial. The trial lasted roughly three hours. The jury was literally out for only five minutes. The judge sentenced her to 10 years in prison. Excuse me. And excuse her from freedom, please. Excuse her from freedom, please. Number nine, I worked at a restaurant that was very popular for brunch and Mother's Day was probably our busiest day of the year. <clears throat> I had a customer call the evening before and ask for a table for six and he was incredibly rude when I informed him that this would simply be an impossibility, nigga. It's the day before, what the fuck? He kept getting more and more worked up asking me to speak to my manager. At first, I didn't want to pass the phone over. My manager wasn't the nicest guy, and we were in the middle of a busy dinner shift. But my manager came up behind me and demanded to know why I had been on the phone for so long. I was like, fuck it, this customer isn't going to listen to me anyway, and gave the phone to Mac. Mac asked how he could help, listened for about 15 seconds before telling this dude something like, so you're trying to, you're trying, no, so you're tying up my hostess in the middle of dinner even, though she's already told you nicely that we can't fit you and your goddamn family in the night before the busiest day of the year fuck your buddy who is his buddy that's the real question i'm pretty sure he meant fuck you buddy and then he hung up the phone somebody said i'm confused on why he told him to fuck his buddy <laughs> the internet anyway number eight a guy comes in and is being a complete asshole Wow, why is he being such a Kyle? See what I did there? A bit of self depper Okay. Not wanting to show his ID to be the guy that's buying gear. Sorry. He didn't want to show his ID to buy beer, even though he looked 20 at the oldest. Constantly yelling and swearing. He also had parked in the handicapped spot, despite not having handicap tags or plates on his car. One of my regular customers, who is a sheriff's deputy, yeah, he's the guy I didn't shoot. Does anybody get that? It's a really bad joke. He's the guy I didn't shoot, okay? Anyway, <clears throat> he was also in the store. Saw how the guy was acting, saw where he was parked, went out, got his ticket book, and wrote the guy a ticket. The guy realized he wasn't getting his beer, went outside to find that he was getting ticketed. I could not stop laughing. You should have seen the look on my face. But I didn't shoot the deputy. No, no, no. Number seven. More than a few decades ago, I worked at Denny's. Yeah. I had two male customers that decided to dine and dash. Wow. They got their license plate number and reported it to the cops and jokingly mentioned that they didn't even tip. Later that night, they got pulled over for DUI. Cops recognized the license plate number from the report bought them both back to the restaurant and forced them to pay the bill. After he was done paying, the cop just stood there and looked at them and said, well, and the guy sheepishly handed me my tip. That's really sweet. Stripe said she didn't shoot the do beauty. Who the fuck? <laughs> oh my God. Anyway, number six, I work at an auto parts store. Yeah, this one guy stole some $60 headlights and literally sprinted out the door. We went to look outside to try and get his license plate. Just in sign to see him speed off, hit a curb, blow out his tire, called the cops, and the dumbass got arrested and had to have his car towed. Well, oh, was it worth it? It was a whoop whoop wibbly worth it for $60 fucking headlights. What madness is this? T. 
Team Clearstream says, what's this all about, gang? Well, it's a list. It was initially about 30 crazy karma is a bitch stories, but now it's just about stories where karma is at play, but in the workplace. Oh yeah. And we're at number five on this last list. Working the window at McDonald's late night, a guy orders whatever and pulls up to the window. I'm cooking and handling the window, so I wasn't there when the customer pulled up. When I walked up to the window, I didn't see the fucker with trash in his lap. I open the window, take his card slash cash, and he throws a bag of trash at me. I take a step back, bothered that I just got trash thrown at me, and I watch his car speed up. I'm pissed, but there's nothing I can do. A couple seconds later, I hear a small bang of metal on metal. I walk to the lobby and look out the windows. The douchebag slammed into a police cruiser who was about to loop around and use the drive through himself. Of course, I also went to tell the officer what had just happened. What the fuck kind of asshole is throwing a bag of trash at people in the fucking uh, drive through at McDonald's? Like, what's wrong with you? What is wrong with you? Someone says, I have a similar story working at McDonald's overnight one weekend when the bars let out. This location was pretty busy with drunks, so cops sat in the parking lot of a church across the street. This drunk asshole comes through the drive through in a Mustang. He's being obnoxious, revving his engine, honking his horn, because he has to wait in line. The cops notice and come around. They tell him to pull into a spot so they can talk to him, and they end up arresting him because he was obviously drunk. But the best part is, he parked in a handicapped spot and ended up getting a $400 ticket for that. Good. Scumbag. You're fucking drunk and you're jumping behind the wing of a... The wing of a... Of a the wheel of a car. My bing bong. Okay. Okay, Carney Cat says some dick. Wow. Mmm. Number four. I worked at Best Buy ten or so years ago. This happened on Black Friday. Working at Best Buy is great. You get some really great uh, benefits. Wow. Most of the customers were in bad moods since they'd been waiting hours to come in and standing in more and had to stand in more lines. But this one lady was a raging bitch. After yelling at everyone in my department about how she needed the laptop that was on sale despite it being sold out, she proceeds to tell us that she'll have the store closed down because she works in the city and knows the fire marshal and we have too many people in the store. So she calls him, we tell her to leave and nothing happens to the store. However, we called them as well to report what she'd said and she got fired from her job for an abuse of power. Good. Good, good, good. Now that's what I'm talking about. Ooh. I can only assume that this is what Carney Cant wants in her life is, is some dick. You know, that's what they that's what they wrote. Wow. What's going on? Number three. Standing at the counter of the pizza place that I work at, a lady storms in and slams pizza down on the counter. This isn't the fucking pizza I ordered. What the hell are you gonna do about that? She asked. <laughs> I look at the pizza and at my buddy Nick and turn back to her and say, nothing. She then goes on a long rant telling, telling how we were going to get fired, how stupid and incompetent we were. She actually told me I must be retarded and then asked why the, the hell we aren't going to do anything. And I said, because the pizza came from the pizza shop across the street. I think she actually managed to shrink in size and slink out looking so pathetic and beaten that I almost felt bad for laughing till tears dripped down my face as she slunk off the look on my face. Oh my bing bong. Mm -mm -mm. Number two. As a teenager, I was working part time at a convenience store. I was being trained by the late night cashier and this dude comes in and grabs a bunch of cans of vegetables and such. 
comes to the counter, stacks the cans in a very specific way, like a weird kind of pyramid on the counter, and as the experienced cashier, my trainer, takes each can off of the pyramid and rings it up, she reaches the end of the stack, and we realize that the weirdo has his cock out and is laying it on the counter between the cans. Without saying a word, the trainer grabs one of the big heavy metal cans and slams it down as hard as she can on the guy's dick. He screams an incredible scream of searing pain, grabbed his cock, and ran out of the store. She to me, you'll get all kinds on the late night shift. Oh my god. Oh my god. Sometime when you see an insect, you just gotta, you know what I'm talking about? I'm surprised he didn't scream like he liked it though. Like, ah, I'll be back in an hour. You know what I mean? <laughs> what the fuck? Well, well, well. Here we are at number one to kind of destroy the rest of this list. I want to thank you all for being here. You're all fantastic and you know it. I want to thank my sponsor as well. Look at you. Mm, just looking so fine, you know, so fine in here. Ooh, so fine. And I want to thank my patrons. <clears throat> Genuinely a uh, happy uh, Easter to all of you. And an even better um, April Fools. I mean, if that's a big deal to you. You know, silly day. Ooh. Um, with that, we're going to go ahead and complete this list with number one. I worked at a telecom in Canada. A lady comes in with a broken iPhone, is demanding to get a new one for free. If you don't know, in Canada, the iPhone 6S is going for about $400 up front on a two-year contract at a minimum $80 plan. She had a good plan, but wanted it for free. And she called up our loyalty team in the store and spent the next two hours screaming at them. Finally, they agreed to a deal, and she is getting it for zero. She looks at me and goes, I do not want a case. And Apple Care is a scam. Please let her drop this phone. We work on commission, so this essentially meant I was getting nothing and running my numbers. She kept telling me to hurry up through the setup, and I was trying to get them out of the store with everything transferred over and set up. She grabs the phone, starts marching off, saying I was a terrible employee. She gets three steps out of the store and drops the phone. She shattered the screen and got a white screen of death. She ran back in asking what I can do. I shrug and went, sorry, but Apple Care sure would have helped. Hey, hey, bit of Canadian for your, uh, for the end of your list here, bing bong. So, um, existence is pain for a me seeks, Jerry. I'm Mr. Meeseeks. <laughs> Look at me. Mmm, baby. Oh, boy. I hope you guys had a wonderful day. And I don't know, I feel kind of dead inside, so there's that. Catch me on Twitch, YouTubers.